Good morning guys, it is Thursday, so it snowed last night and unfortunately, as I thought it might be the case, uh, the snow has gone. We've got thin bits on the floor, but primarily all disappeared. Um, but it was nice, so I'm glad that I kind of vlogged a little bit of it last night. Um, what I might do is loop it into this. In fact, I'm going to put it on the previous vlog, which I haven't uploaded yet, so you'll see that. So today, I'm staring off a little bit. It's not a vlog as we know, but it kind of is. So I wanted to do like a little mini tutorial on how to get Bocalicious photos. Or Bocky, Bocalicious is just made up. So for those of you guys who may not be familiar with what Bocky is, in layman's term, it's basically those photos that you see where the subject is in focus and the background is blurred out. That is what Bocky is. Some people call it Bocky, some people call it Bokeh, some people call it but whatever. It, it's the same thing. Uh, so yeah, the subject is in focus and you get that nice blur in the back. Now, the great thing about using Bucky in photos, of course it depends on what your style of work is, but it can really make a photograph really pop. So if you're shooting a portrait session, you can use Bucky to really, you know, draw the person's eye, so the person's looking at the photo, draw their eye into the face as opposed to the background noise. Um, if you're shooting low light photography, say of, um, I don't know, a city lights or whatever, um, you can, and you're shooting a portrait, you can have the port, you can have the subject in focus and have the amazing sort of colourful lights in the back um, blurred out and things like that, you know, you can really make, make or break an image. So you can play around with it a lot. It works really well with fairy lights, which is what we're going to do today. So it, since it's coming up to Christmas and we've got the Christmas tree up, yes, I've mentioned it 10 million times already. Uh, since it's already up, I thought it would be the perfect sort of um, subject to use for this mini tutorial. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so one of the things to really remember when you're trying to shoot bulky photos is... The sort of the main point is that your lens needs to be wide open with the aperture. So if you have a lens that supports say 1.2, 1.4, uh, some kit lenses they start from 3.5, you need to be shooting with it wide open. So wide open as in the lowest number, so either 1.2, 1.4, 2.0, 2.8, 3.5, whatever. Um, whatever your lens supports. There are a lot of point and shoot cameras that you can actually do the same thing with as well. Uh, some of them work in auto, some of them not so well, but you have the manual option. I would always suggest to kind of familiarize yourself with manual settings as opposed to just auto because you have full control over your camera that way. So what I'll be using today is my beloved Canon 5D Mark II and um, I'm gonna go with my fixed lens, which is my Canon 50mm 1.4. I absolutely love shooting sort of portrait sessions or even when I'm traveling, um, love shooting with the 50mm 1.4 uh, because I, you know, I am a huge fan of sort of photo, uh, photos with Bocky on it. So it works in low light as well as daytime. So it's a great sort of versatile lens. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do, I tried to get the room as dark as possible, but it is beaming outside. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. So I've switched obviously my camera on. Let's get this started. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I have my aperture set to 1.4 and I'm going to adjust my ISO to about 200 just to see how it goes. You'll have to adjust your ISO depending on the setting that you're shooting at, of course. Um, um, shutter speed, I'm going to leave about 200-ish. And I'm going to set it to auto white balance. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take this shot just to see how this looks. So what I'm going to do is take the shot, I'm going to show you guys how it looks on this setting. You guys can see that looped in right about now. And I'm gonna go ahead and change that ISO to about 250 to 320 because it's not quite as bright as I would like. That looks really nice. And we're gonna take a few more shots to show you guys what you can achieve just by shooting. Just by changing the settings on the camera.
Okay, so I've got a few images that I'm going to show you guys, and that is literally just a men. So at the moment, I've set it to ISO 500. Uh, aperture is still 1.4, and then you've got uh, shutter speed at uh, 200 of a second. Now, what I'm going to do is up it and change the aperture to um, 2.5, just to show you the differences between shooting at 1.4 and then 2.5. ISO is still set to 500, and shutter speed is still 200 of a second. I'm going to do last one which will be at aperture 4.0, I'll knock up the ISO to about 1250 and I'll leave the shutter speed at 200 of a second. So you guys will see the differences between the the bokeh on for um, so shooting 1.4 all the way up to what did I say 4.0 um, yeah 4.0 and you can see just by looking at the photos how the bokeh changes in terms of how much of a circle there is in the bokeh and to mix it up you can actually use sort of tools uh, to add another dimension to your photos which I'll probably do on a different tutorial um, the fit, as I say the fixed lenses do work a lot better but kit lenses will work even with a zoom on them um, once you've kind of grasped the basics of how to create bucket images you can start playing around with it a lot more and kind of start experimenting and whatnot. When I first started out, I was getting confused with the whole aperture aspects of things because the way that I was reading things and people were demonstrating didn't make sense to me. So a lot of it is literally just by learning by doing. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have found this little tutorial um, useful. If you guys have got any questions, of course, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Uh, as I say, you can create bokeh photos on pretty much any sort of camera right now. Um, even on mobile phones, actually. Uh, the cameras are so great on sort of handsets these days that you can actually do it um, on the... Oh my God, there's a huge spider. Um, you can do it with uh, photos... Sorry, you can do it with handsets which have the support of 1.4, 2.8, I know the iPhone does that, I'm not too sure about the uh, phones of the market. So yeah, I hope you guys find it useful. Um, if you guys got any questions, as I say, just comment down below. I'm going to get rid of that spider in a minute. Um, and I'm going to leave it at there. What I'm going to also do is add some more photos to the end of this um, video, just so you guys get an idea of what else you can create with it. Um, I'm eyeing up that spider right now and I will be back shortly.